Hello and welcome to my course where I teach you how to draw in bite-sized lessons. Today I'm going to teach you how to draw using the scribbling technique. It's an awesome, fun, loose drawing method and I know you're really going to enjoy it. You're definitely going to improve your drawing skills immeasurably using this technique. So this is lesson number 14 in the course, so I'll leave a link up to the beginning of the course over here if you're new to the channel. Let's get going. Scribble drawing is when you draw using random looking scribbles on the paper, but together these scribbles form an image. This loose sketching style is perfect to practice your eye-hand coordination in order to draw more accurately. It also works great when you want to test different compositions before committing to a final design. Scribble drawing also helps you get your head around the tonal values and textures in a scene before you start a bigger drawing. You can even use scribble drawing when sketching outdoors. Having said that, scribble drawing also makes popular artistic looking drawings that you can sell. To do scribble drawing, all you need is one pencil and some paper. I like to use a dark pencil like an 8B as that allows you to vary the pressure to get a variety of tonal values as you draw. You could also use charcoal or pens for scribble drawing. Although a scribble drawing must look like it's been drawn hurriedly, carelessly and spontaneously, in reality it really is. You must still consider your subject matter before you start drawing. You can't draw fine detail when scribbling, so avoid drawing very intricate subjects. Unless you are drawing on a very large piece of paper or simplifying the scene dramatically, scenes like this would not make a good scribble drawing. Especially when you're still new to the technique, you're better off looking for simple subjects with clearly defined tonal values, edges and value changes. Things like these single item still life subjects, simple portraits and basic landscapes are perfect to start off on. As you gain more confidence, you can move to more intricate subjects. Now let's take a look at the techniques you can use when scribble drawing. Some of them we've already covered in previous lessons. You can use lines, hatching, cross hatching, as well as scumbling while scribbling. Then you can also use loops, waves, and random squiggles while drawing. In fact, you can use any motion you want except blending. We don't blend while scribbling. If you need to create a shading, you can do it using more or less squiggles, hatches, or scumbles. What is important when scribbling is the process you follow while drawing and when you use each technique. When you're new to scribbling, don't be shy to add sketch outlines to your drawing paper before you start sketching. This allows you to initially get your head around the scribbling methods without having to worry about getting the proportions of your drawing correct. That way, even your initial scribble drawings will look good. Then, once you have a grasp on the actual drawing process, you can start with a blank page to also improve your eye-hand coordination. In the beginning, I also recommend that you work from a same size reference as it makes it easier to judge your dimensions and proportions. In the description below, you can download a PDF containing one-to-one -one reference photos and sketch outlines to get you started. Initially, you start with a blank sheet of paper, so use broad loops, waves and random squiggles to make a few marks on the paper. The idea is to get something down on the paper that you can reference and judge distances from. You use these initial marks to figure out roughly where the outlines of the subject is as well as more or less where the main features belong. At this stage you can scribble anywhere and everywhere including past the edges of your subject. And don't worry if you're not accurate right away. Draw continuously without lifting your pencil off the paper as you move from one section of the drawing to another. With scribbling, your initial rough sketches become part of the drawing once complete, so the rougher it starts off, the better. You can see that the marks I'm making are very rough and loose, but I'm not rushing to lay them down. Take your time, get the positioning of the main features gradually more and more accurate as you scribble. Once you are happy with the general proportions and positions, you can move on to establishing the final positions and shapes of each feature. 
What I like to do is work a little bit here and a little bit there. That helps to more accurately judge the different features against each other. It also stops you from getting lost in little details in one area too soon. In fact, you could even stop drawing at this stage if you want a very loose scribble drawing. But we'll continue. Now that you are reasonably certain of the positioning of the elements in your drawing, you can move over to using the tighter scribbling techniques like hatching and scumbling. You then use these techniques to lay down the various tonal values in the correct places in the drawing and as you do, gradually refine the position and detail of each element. As before, work a little bit here, a little bit there, so that the whole drawing comes together at the same time. As you near the end of the drawing, stand back and evaluate the whole drawing. If it doesn't look loose and scribbly enough for you, add more of the loose scribbles past the edges of the subject to enhance the artistic effect. And just like that, you have yourself an awesome scribble drawing. That was so much fun, wasn't it? So here's just a word of encouragement at this point. If you're not starting out with an initial sketch, your drawing may look well out of proportion. Don't be discouraged. This is normal. You're busy training your eye-hand coordination, so the more you use this technique, the more accurate you'll find yourself drawing. And drawing like this is reasonably quick, so don't be shy. Do the same drawing multiple times, and each time you do, your drawing will look more and more accurate. And before you know it, you can draw perfectly accurately first time round. In the next lesson, we will start our realistic drawing journey by looking at different ways to block in a solid area of tonal value. I will leave a link to that class here, as well as a link to my website, where you will find hundreds of real-time follow-along drawing and painting projects and courses. If you've enjoyed the lesson, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next class.